We've made a prediction twice now that our culture is on a path towards accepting and normalizing paedophilia. The first time was in the Stay Free series and then the second time was in the War and Truth series. My reasoning for saying it in Stay Free was basically that we are watching the moral breakdown of our society today. The West has rejected God, rejected Christianity, rejected the moral underpinnings of our civilization that's guided us for 2,000 years and therefore we're starting to see our civilization fall apart. One of the key signs that a civilization is indeed unraveling, and we see this time and time again from history, is that it starts to accept and promote sexual confusion. The most famous example from history is of course the Roman Empire. Historians have agreed for centuries that when the Romans started normalizing sexual confusion, it was an outward sign of inner moral decay that signaled that their civilization did not have long to go. That I believe is what we are witnessing in the West today. I came across this video recently from Camille Paglia that adds weight to that concept. On androgyny, I've always been fascinated, attracted to, you know, to the subject of androgyny, uh, and, and that's what the sexual persona is. I explored it in history, but the, the more I explored it, I realized that um, that historically, this uh, this uh, the movement toward androgyny occurs in late phases of culture. Okay, as a as if a civilization is starting to uh, unravel. Okay, and that, that you can find it again and again and again through history in the in, in the in the Greek art. Okay, you can you can see it happen. All of a sudden, okay, there's a, there's a kind of uh, you know the the, the sculptures of of, um, of handsome nude young men athletes that used to be very robust, okay, in the archaic period suddenly begin to seem like wet noodles, okay, you know, toward the end, okay, and that, uh, and that and that the people who 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 live in such periods, a late phase of culture. Whether it's, it's the Hellenistic era, whether it's the Roman Empire, whether it's, it's uh, the Mauve decade of Oscar Wilde in the 1890s, whether it's Weimar Germany, people who live in such times okay, feel that um, they're very sophisticated, they're very cosmopolitan. Okay? Homosexuality, heterosexuality, so what? Anything goes and so on. All right? and so, and but but we, from the perspective of, of historical distance, okay, you can see that it's a culture that no longer believes in itself. So sexual degradation, sexual confusion is a sign that culture is starting to break down. And although Camille Paglia didn't actually say it, what we see from history is that the advanced stages of that breakdown do tend to involve an acceptance of paedophilia. And then the second reason for predicting the eventual approval of paedophilia, and this is what I spoke about in the War and Truth series, is that the same arguments and the same set of liberal values that were used to successfully push the gay marriage agenda, those same arguments, those same values also hold true for the paedophile agenda. See, our culture has decided that the only value that we need is love. Therefore, if something is deemed a valid expression of love, and to this generation, it must be a good thing. Man and a woman, two men, two women, three men, doesn't matter to this generation. Love is love, love is all that matters, and no argument can stand against that in the postmodern era. You can counter appeal to righteousness, you can counter appeal to holiness, you can counter appeal to truth and data and statistics, but none of it will matter. Our culture has decided that love has no connection to any of those other values, and these other values certainly don't hold as much weight. Therefore, if paedophiles can successfully convince the world that their proclivity is just a natural expression of love, that they were born that way, that they're just a poor, marginalized minority who just want to love, that's all they would need to do to turn the tide in their favor in this generation. That's all the homosexual lobby had to do to turn the tide in their favor. That's all the paedophile lobby would need to do also. The gay lobby has shown them the way in this. They've shown them how to do this. So that's how we predicted they would go about it in the war and truth. Phase one, they would need to start trying to present themselves to the world in a more sympathetic light. Start trying to pull heartstrings. Start saying that they're marginalized and sad and say it's natural and just a valid expression of love and say that you can't help how you feel. Say these things and they will soon have the postmodernist sympathy, as shocking as that currently sounds to us. And that's in spite of the facts, that's in spite of morality, that's in spite of everything else. Because frankly, the postmodernist doesn't give equal weight to any other value. In fact, this is how I said it would happen in the War and Truth series. 
Here's how it would likely happen. Left-leaning intellectuals will begin proposing with increasing boldness that paedophilia is just a natural proclivity. They will say that paedophiles are just a misunderstood, marginalised minority who deserve equality. Maybe a high-profile story will hit the news that will portray it in a sympathetic light. Perhaps a poster couple will emerge for the movement and they'll tour the media channel saying that they're really in love and it's an arrangement that works for them. New studies will be done that conclude that since the Greeks and Romans and other ancient civilizations engaged in paedophilia, it must be natural. After it's been framed in this sympathetic way, the herd, not wanting to be seen as intolerant or bigoted or out of step with the group think, will then begin to support paedophile rights. Attitudes will relax, it will become more widely accepted in public, and anyone who opposes it will then be shouted down as an intolerant paedophobe. Those in power will come out as paedophiles themselves and they'll change the laws to suit their appetites. It will pass from rightly being seen as an evil to being seen as an unfortunate disorder to just being seen as a legitimate expression of love. From an evil to an unfortunate disorder worthy of our sympathy to a legitimate expression of love. That's the sequence I believe that we're going to see pursued in the future. Now the reason I'm making this video today is that just last week a friend of this ministry notified me that this is already starting to pick up pace and they are indeed using these exact tactics to try to turn the tide of public opinion. Firstly, they're now actively vying to be included under the LGBT umbrella. Secondly, they're rebranding themselves with more politically correct speech, calling themselves not paedophiles anymore, but instead minor attracted persons. Thirdly, they've adopted a version of the rainbow flag with soft pastel colours. And then fourthly, liberal academics are indeed already trying to present them in a more sympathetic light. What follows are clips from a TED talk given just last month at the University of Würzburg. Let me tell you about Jonas. Jonas is 19 years old. He studies law in Munich. In his spare time, he likes to play soccer. Jonas has a secret which he thinks he cannot share with anyone, not even with his best friend or with his parents. He's just too afraid of anger, rejection, and repulsion. Jonas knows that he has to suppress his sexual drive for his entire life. And he also knows that there will never be a loving and fulfilling partnership that he can enter. Because Jonas is a pedophile. He's only attracted to female children between the ages of 6 and 12 years. Like every other sexual orientation, pedophilia can have different characteristics. For example, it can be heterosexual, it can be homosexual, bisexual. Within the male population, 1 to 2 percent are considered to be pedophiles. This translates to about 60 million people worldwide. This is as much as the population of Italy or of South Africa. Therefore, pedophilia is not an irrelevant phenomenon we can't simply ignore. Chances every one of you knows at least one pedophile are higher than that you don't know anyone. So generally speaking, anyone could be born a pedophile. It is crucial to understand the difference between pedophilia and child sexual abuse, which is illegal and must always be. Pedophilia is only the sexual preference for pre-adolescent children. The difference between child sexual abuse and pedophilia becomes very obvious when we look at scientific studies. Scientific studies indicate that only 20 to 30 percent of all child molesters are pedophiles. Not every pedophile abuses children. And not everyone who abuses children is a pedophile. Differentiating between these two groups is essential. Pedophilia is an unchangeable sexual orientation, just like, for example, heterosexuality. No one chooses to be a pedophile. No one can cease being one. Scientific studies indicate that one of the strongest predictors for child sexual abuse committed by pedophiles is social isolation. 
we can make a difference for Jonas, we as a society can be there for him. At the moment, we live in a world that already excludes pedophiles because of their preference alone. Someone who is lonely and excluded from society has little to lose and is at much higher risk to commit a crime like, for example, child sexual abuse. We can make Jonas feel that he stays a valuable member of our society, although he's a pedophile. Right now, most of us feel discomfort when we think about this scenario. And most of us feel discomfort when we think about pedophiles. But just like pedophiles, we are not responsible for our feelings. We do not choose them, but we are responsible for our actions. And we must make a decision. It is in our responsibility to reflect and to overcome our negative feelings about pedophiles and to treat them with the same respect we treat other people with. We should accept that pedophiles are people who have not chosen their sexuality and who, unlike most of us, will never be able to live it out freely if they want to lead an upright life. We should accept that pedophilia is a sexual preference, a thought, a feeling, and not an act. We should differentiate between child sexual abuse and pedophilia. We shouldn't increase the suffering of pedophiles by excluding them, by blaming and mocking them. By doing that, we increase their isolation and we increase the chance of child sexual abuse. My perspective has been completely changed by hearing Jonas's story, hearing about his cruel fate and understanding the difference between child sexual abuse and pedophilia. As a medical student with a background in psychology, I feel it as my responsibility to help others overcome and escape wrong stigmatization and to have a positive impact on our future society. So you can hopefully see the insidious nature of what was being said there. The attempt to invoke sympathy, to say that it's natural, that they can't help how they feel, to say that they're born that way, to say that we're marginalizing and excluding these poor people, and that we're the ones to blame for causing child sexual abuse because we're being mean to poor Jonas and other people like him. These are the exact same arguments that were once used to soften public opinion to gay marriage, and they're being used all over again. And my plea for this video is simply that we don't let this happen, not this time. This is pure evil, and there's a spiritual evil behind it all too. I wanted to make this video so that we are fully aware of the assault that's coming, so that we are aware of the tactics being employed, and so that we might be shocked into re-evaluating where we're actually heading as a society today. Liberals have been saying for years that love is love, love is all that matters. But if you have nothing solid underlying that philosophy, if you don't connect your idea of love to righteousness, to wholesomeness, then you're gonna see the worst kinds of depravity, group marriages, pedophilia, bestiality, and incest, because every one of those groups will simply say that theirs is also a valid kind of love. So you would approve of the incest marriage then? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> We can't let this happen. This isn't progressive. This is regressive. This is return to a depraved world that Christianity once managed to reform for the better. As we turn our back on God, our society is falling apart and surely everyone can see that. And if we don't take action now to return to those moral foundations, to return to the Bible, to return to God, we are going to regret this. Please world, do not let this happen.